was hectic. The case that stopped the nation. Let's light some fires. You sure did, Bruce. You lit some fires in the explosively flammable rubbish bin that is your life. He's only got himself to blame. After managing to escape a criminal conviction, Bruce Lerman decided to again chance his arm with the judiciary. A fateful roll of the dice perfectly summed up by Justice Michael Lee as an act of risky stupidity. Having escaped the lion's den, Mr Lerman made the mistake of coming back for his hat. Turns out Bruce Lerman is no Indiana Jones. His decision to sue Lisa Wilkinson and the 10 Network after they accused him of rape has backfired spectacularly because Justice Michael Lee arrived at the conclusion most of Australia had come to months ago. Mr Lerman raped Miss Higgins. That Lerman was into Brittany Higgins, he made sure she was well liquored up and after getting fresh at a crap Canberra nightclub, took her back to Parliament House with the express aim of having sex. He likely wanted to continue to be intimate with Miss Higgins, put bluntly. It was a 23-year-old male cheating on his girlfriend. This idea that Lerman was going back to Parliament at, what was it, 2am or something, for the purposes of doing some work, was always utter nonsense. You've got a belly full of booze and you're with a woman who is well out of your league and who you've just been snogging, and you think in that moment in the taxi, I'd better go back to the office because the Australian Defence Minister needs some stuff done. For the record, Bruce, if the Defence Minister needs something done at 2am, the people getting it done are members of the SAS or ASIO, not a 23-year-old political staffer who is drunk in Canberra. And then we're meant to believe that once in his office, Bruce dutifully goes about his work completely oblivious to the drunk girl in the next room. In his pursuit of gratification, he did not care one way or the other whether Miss Higgins understood or agreed to what was going on. Thank God for Michael Lee. It's very easy to paint judges as being out of touch in their ivory towers. And judges wonder why the community has lost faith in the justice system. But this bloke has restored faith in the bench. Put him in the high court. Put him in the lodge. Here's hoping that whichever judges have to finish this job have justice lees down to earth census. I'm ready for this to be over. Two more cases to get through before the country can finally extinguish this social and political dumpster fire. Linda Reynolds, that's the boss Lerman tried to tell us he was so keen to impress by going back to the office that night in 2019, has her own defamation action still going. She's suing Higgins and Higgins' partner David Shiraz for alleged defamatory social media posts. That's back in the WA Supreme Court in May. And then there's Lerman's upcoming criminal trial. Seriously, this guy's lawyers will be buying Ferraris by the end of the year. He's accused of twice raping a woman in Toowoomba in October 2021. God, the poor locals in Toowoomba. Hometown of Joel Couchy, a name that will go down in history alongside Martin Bryant, Man Monis and a host of other killers we won't dignify with names. We have the full list of Couchy's victims confirmed. Six completely different people from all parts of the world happening to come together at exactly the wrong place at exactly the wrong time. You've got Dawn Singleton, the beautiful bride-to-be who is the daughter of one of Australia's best-known businessmen, that's advertising gazillionaire John Singleton, and who was about to marry Ashley Wildy, a New South Wales police officer who was called to the shopping centre as reports emerged that there was a man with a knife hurting people. Then we have Ashley Good, young mum who died trying to save her baby. Nine-month-old Harriet stabbed while she was in her pram. Now, in 25 years of journalism, I've written and spoken some terrible words about terrible events, but nine-month-old baby stabbed in her pram. That takes some beating for sheer depravity. Her mum rushes her bleeding child away from Couchy and begs two brothers to keep her safe before Ashley collapses and later dies in hospital. Those two plot lines alone would test the credibility of any Netflix series and it unfolded at a Westfield shopping centre. Jade Young was an architect. A much loved member of the Bronte Surf Club. Then we have a host of victims who speak to Australia's very rich social tapestry. Yixuan Cheng was a Chinese woman studying in Australia. Pikria Dacia, an artist from Georgia. And Pakistani refugee Faraz Tahir. Only been in Australia a year, takes a job as a security guard and fronts up for his first day at the Bondi Junction shops a few hours before Couchy walks in. Completely unhinged. Notice we have medicalised acts of wickedness now. We don't call the perpetrator evil. We call them disturbed or troubled. Couchy wasn't on the Queensland Police's fixated threat database, which tracks people who become obsessed with public figures. But the more we look into his past, the more clues we find that this guy had a lot of hallmarks of someone who was on the path to violence. Obsessed with knives. Complained to police that his parents had taken his collection of blades off him. 
had delusions about his own station in life. He advertised himself as a male escort and clearly lonely, put out messages on social media for people to come surfing with him and to take photos of the night sky. And to go shooting with. You don't need to be an FBI graduate to realise that's a red flag. And this is where Australia had its there but for the grace of God moment. Joel Couchy, a lonely schizophrenic, was scoping firearms. Anyone who reckoned that Australia's gun laws are too restrictive should remember that if Joel Couchy had the option of walking into his local Walmart and buying an assault rifle, he would have. And the body count would have been a lot higher. I'm Ben Harvey. For more Up Late, click the subscribe button below.